Greetings Padawans. This is a quick little Jedi battle tip I'm going to put together for QoS configuration. Um, this is actually something I did recently and uh, one of my uh, junior techs was working with me on this asked me a couple questions so I thought this would be a really good subject to review here real quick. It's not necessarily something that's complicated uh, at least when explained clearly but just thrown into a situation like this with uh, a topic like QoS and prioritization can be you know a little tricky so this video I'm assuming that you know the theory behind QoS essentially it's just a way to prioritize your packets um, this is going to be focusing on the router in that's facing the service provider uh, QoS on your Ethernet LAN your 100 meg or even gigabit LAN not really necessary um, it's certainly good practices to have it but you know, you're, there's not a lot of contention for bandwidth. It's really when you hit the service provider network and, you know, maybe you have a 10 meg or a 20 meg Ethernet circuit and all of that is going, say, to your data center or to your other branch offices, then the QoS becomes a little bit more critical. So what we're going to do is build a scenario very similar to what I had to do. We had uh, a voice over IP system, a uh, video conferencing system and then additionally when we were looking at this we thought you know there's some other things we want to deprioritize in the network so it doesn't interfere with uh, legitimate business uh, applications and services so let's take a look here real quick kind of throw so the scenario is this this is our service provider um, we have a 10 meg Ethernet circuit um, they define what you can uh, specify for your different queues. This isn't something I tell them. They say these are your options here. So priority five, which is the highest, is 40%. This is what we're probably going to use for our voice since it's the most sensitive to latency. Silver, next one is 20%. That's probably what we'd use for video. Bronze, which is 20%. This will be used for call control traffic to set up the calls, but not the actual audio itself. As well, um, something that's sensitive to latency could be terminal services traffic, remote desktop, that sort of thing. So uh, any of those sessions will have less latency. Maybe you're using Citrix, maybe you're using RDP, whatever the case is. This might be another good place to put it. Uh, and then last is best effort. So first thing I had to do is go and research what are the protocols and communication being used. So this happened to be a short tail system. The way it is here, it's specific to VLAN 48. It is on this IP address, uh, 10.140.48 with a 22 mask, which means it's going to go from 10.140.48 all the way up to uh, 51, 52 being the start of the next network increment. So 10.140.48.1 all the way through 51.254 is the entire range of IPs. Just you know, a review of your subnetting here. Um, so it uses the RTP protocol and going to mark it up with an IP precedence of five. Now, certain devices, such as the voice uh, server, should already mark its traffic as soon as it leaves the server with this tag of five. So you don't necessarily have to have the router do it as long as it trusts this precedent. Um, the call setup traffic, however, a little bit more complicated to that. Um, it should, again, according to docu uh, documentation that I read, mark it up coming out of the server and the various switches and whatnot as IP precedence 3. Not all devices, though, participating, for instance, the phones, aren't going to necessarily mark up their traffic to 3. So it's probably a good idea to recognize the protocols that are being used as well as the tag. Um, for the video conferencing system, it is a polycom. Uh, it also has its own specific VLAN, so we can mark that VLAN as well. Uh, it also tags the traffic as it leaves the video conferencing server at IP precedence 4. That way, as long as you trust your uh, traffic's priority setting, it will be honored throughout your network. All right, next thing was Windows Terminal Services. This is something that we're going to put at IP precedence 3. As I said before, it's uh, kind of sensitive to latency, especially when you have... Uh, 100, 200 users that connect remotely, say a retail environment where you have a POS desktop or a manager desktop that's presented to them from a data center, they can just log into a terminal server. This will kind of uh, minimize a little bit of the latency they have. And the last thing you want to do is we want to minimize the bandwidth taken up by point-to-point -point protocols, streaming protocols, that sort of thing, so that 
other more business critical traffic can take that priority. So this is just to understand the requirements as we go and build out the configuration that we're going to do. All right. So uh, first thing I want to do actually is when I go through this, I probably want to build an access control list to start defining these protocols. It's easy to, when you build out your class maps to say, oh, this subnet, this, that. But when you do something specific to uh, a non-standard protocol, you really have to build uh, an IP extended list to do that. So let's, let's do that as the first step to do our call control traffic and whatnot. So here's the router. Let's go into configuration mode. So the first thing that I'll do, uh, since it's a little bit easier, is to do the uh, the video VLAN. Actually, <laughs> I memory failing me in my old age. Let me write down the VLANs here on a notepad over to the side. All right, that is this, and this is going to be our video. Okay. So let's build this. Actually, you know what? I should copy these protocols too because I haven't exactly memorized this. Okay. So let's go ahead and build this access list. Ah. Ambiguous commands. Standard. Now, I'm a fan of named access lists, especially when you know, are putting them in class maps, and then class maps go to policy maps. It can be uh, a little bit confusing. So for this, I would strongly recommend you make a name that uh, makes sense to you. And just kind of another syntactical practice I recommend, make the names of your lists all caps. You'll find it very uh, easy to manage. So ACL Video LAN. Uh, very brief, but yet descriptive, all caps. I can look at this and instantly know what the purpose of this is. Another practice I recommend, start it off with a remark statement, video subnets. So as I, when I do a show run and I see this list, this remark will actually help me to understand what was I thinking when I look at this six months from now to possibly troubleshoot an issue, is this gonna make it a lot easier? All right, now let's set this so permit IP, and it was 10.140.64.0. Next, we want to set a wildcard mask. So the, yeah, I got, my brain has to think about this. It was a 22-bit mask. So the wildcard is going to be 0.0.3.255. Zero .0, uh, oh, what else am I seeing? Do, 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 do. Oh, yes, to any. All right, this is an extended list. So permit traffic coming from our video LAN, our video subnet, going to any destination to match this list. All right, and that's it for the video one. That's the one for the uh, VoIP, as you can see, there's quite a bit more. So let's go through this. IP access list extended ACL to define again its purpose, VoIP control. So this is basically all of the control traffic to set up calls. So, you know, different vendors, by the way, let me take a second here. You have to do your research. You have to read the documentation the vendor provides you. There's no way I'm going to know this off the top of my head. I had to pull up the admin guide, look at their knowledge base, and then I uh, got the list of protocols that will need to be set up at this level. So here we go. Remark, VoIP, call, control. So permit UDP from any source, any destination on port 2427. All right, permit UDP any, any 2727. Permit UDP any, any Sun RPC. Let's see, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, equals, right, we have to do equals sun RPC. There we go. And then also the TCP version of it. All right. What's next? Permit TCP any, any equal to 5540. 
All right, and then the last one is a range. So uh, there's a little trick. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Instead of equals at the very end, you're going to actually specify the range of UDB ports. So any, any instead of equals, you notice one of the options is to set a range right here. All right, so let's do that. 5540 to 5548. Bam, there we go. And the last one that we want to do is set up the actual VoIP traffic itself. So IP access list extended, again, ACL, VoIP, LAN. So we're going to make the remark again to identify VoIP subnets. So permit uh, IP from 10.140. This one, I believe, is 48. Let me just scroll up. Yeah, it's 48.0 and the wildcard mass 0.0.0.3.255. 0 .0 From there to any. Bam. And there we go. So let's show run. Little tip, by the way, in case you don't know it, if you, you normally you can't do show run from config mode. Really annoying. If you preface it with do, <laughs> preface it with doo-doo. <laughs> It's all over the patio, just got some on your shoe. <laughs> the magic of dog do. So, do, show, run, you can see, you'll go through the config. And there's our list here. Look, look, notice how much easier it is. You're seeing, aha, the ACL video LAN, the remark kind of clarifies it, bam, you're looking at this other one, ACL VoIP control, I mean, it makes it a lot easier. And believe me, as you look through configs, Typically, you set up a network, you get it running, and then you don't touch it for several months. It's up, you know, once a router is configured, it's a well-oiled machine. It's not something you typically have to mess with. So it's good to give yourself these kinds of notes to ease troubleshooting emergencies. So now we've defined these access lists to help us build the class maps. And the class maps are the first part of building our QoS to identify, to match the traffic. So let's go through and actually start building that out. So the syntax for this, first you, we're going to, let's, we're matching this now. Uh, let me, let me take a second here. There's two options for this, really. Match any and match all. We're not going to talk about, you know, the, the type option for a second. That's if you want to do something more advanced, like an inspect thing for a zone or whatnot. We're just looking at match all, match any. Match all means every statement, every requirement has to be met. It has to have this protocol, it has to have that protocol, it has to have these uh, IP ACL statements. Whatever you set there, it must match all of them. That's not what we're going to do. And um, what we're going to do is a match any. Because we only want one of these conditions to necessarily be met. So first, let's uh, build out the uh, priority five. So again, this is for the purpose of matching what we have with our service provider. Our service provider is giving us gold, silver, bronze based on the IP precedence level. So we're going to kind of keep consistent with that. We want to match up our service provider here. So first thing we'll do, uh, again, you want to give this a meaningful name. So we'll say IPP5 CMAP to short for class map. All right. Now what we're going to do here, uh, just to show you the options, you, this is basically here to match your settings. What are you going to define to this class, IPP5? You have a couple options here, um, just to have you do a quick review. If you're doing frame D relay, you can do the discard eligible bit. If you're doing MPLS, MPLS the exponential bit. There's a lot of options here. So we're going to look on building this. Let's think for a second what they are. Well, first one that we're going to do is anything that is marked up by that precedent, right? Our, uh, our service provider is going to recognize IP precedence 5. Well, we also want to make sure we match IP precedence 5. So match precedence 5. Again, the server in uh, the voice server and some of the switches are supposed to already mark that traffic as IP precedence 5. The phones may or may not necessarily do that depending on remote offices. If you have a large MPLS network, that's um, going to carry these QoS tags through. It's probably best to make sure as soon as it hits that MPLS that you're looking for that IP precedent stamp on the IP header. 
All right, so that's one of the things. What's the other thing that we want to match? Uh, we did create an ACL to match the subnet. So let's do that. Match, uh, and it's access group is the command to define uh, an ACL. So here you type in the name of our ACL. So I believe uh, it was uh, ACL VoIP LAN. Let's see. Oh, I have to say, <laughs> then you have to do name. See? Uh, it's late. The methamphetamine lab is closed, so I have to rely on my own uh, my own uh, caffeine fix here to keep me running. So it's ACL VoIP LAN. All right. Now, there's another option that you have here as well. You can actually match protocols. Let me go through that with you. It's a feature set called INBAR, network-based, what is it? Uh, Network-based application recognition, and it can look at protocols and their signatures predefined. So you'll notice here we have quite a few. I mean, the selection is huge. However, the ones that were specific to Shortel, doing your research again, were not defined. Now, this is for the uh, IP precedence three, but just to answer the question, hmm, we just built this call setup. Why didn't we just use NBAR? Well, unfortunately, these protocols were not defined. This Sun RPC one was to. Uh, possibly defined, but since we we're creating an ACL, I wanted to go through the entire exercise. So back to here. So the protocol that is used for most voice over IP is RTP audio. I just want to show you RTP. You have video option as well. Match protocol RTP audio. All right. That's pretty much it for the IP precedence five class map. All right. Now we need to make the other classes. So let's go ahead and do that. Class map. Match any. That. All right, so this is going to be IPP3 CMAP. And this is where we're going to define the call control traffic. So first thing we want to do, match precedence three then we want to match the access control list that we just created uh, there we go name and it was ACL VoIP control now we can actually look at this and say hmm are there some other protocols that might be used when third-party vendors try to interface with this system yes there are just to make sure we have them covered, the two I'd recommend would be SIP and RTCP. Again, you're not, you may or may not know this off the top of your head. I know it because I went through the vendor's documentation and got all this. You know, spent my good two, three hours reading their knowledge base and their admin guide. So match protocol SIP and match protocol real-time control protocol. Just a little uh, uh, primer here on voice over IP, RTP real-time protocol is what's used for the actual voice, the payload. Real-time control is what's used to set up the call, to set up sessions. And SIP is another common one that's used by this vendor as well. Although their implementation is a little bit different. Um, uh, kind of a side note here, Shortel's implementation of SIP is a little bit uh, non-standardized. And you'll find that with vendors. You know, the way they implement protocols may not necessarily be the same across the board. So this, using this uh, in-bar uh, feature set on a Cisco router may not actually, uh, may not actually correctly identify the traffic to tag it later. So we've, we've done our protocols, we've done that. Let's just do a do show run, uh, begin at, uh, what was it? IPP3, Let's see what we get. There it is. So this is what we have so far. Match the access group, match ship. So I think we're good on that one. Let's exit out of here. Uh, the next one we need to do is for our video conferencing system. Let's go ahead and do that. Match any IPP4 CMAP. All right. So again, we uh, did make ourselves an access group, and we also have the... Uh, precedence tag that's going to be coming out of the video server. So let's first match that. 
match precedence. Yeah, if it can stop screaming at me, match precedence four, and then match uh, access group name ACO. Uh, what was it again? I think it was ACO video. Yeah, ACO video LAN. All right. Now we can also uh, go through and see if we want to match some other protocols and whatnot that are on that. But uh, when I did my research on this VoIP system, they use a whole customized set. So it's better to let their server tag the precedences for. Again, this is going to change from vendor to vendor. All right. Now the last thing that we wanted to do, we want to create a scavenger class for all of those point-to-point -point protocols and whatnot. This is where that feature set in bar is going to come in really, really handy. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean here. So there's quite a few. So let's first actually define the class map. We'll say scavenger cmap. So quite a list here. Immediately you can say definitely BitTorrent would be one of those. BitTorrent, eDonkey, that's another one. Fast Track, Nutella, Kazaa, Kazaa is definitely one. So you know they have all of these protocols here. There are now this might not be all of them, but this is certainly a good start to control your bandwidth and make sure that users aren't doing something naughty that they're not supposed to be doing. Now. You might say, why am I doing it this way? Why am I not creating an access control list to simply block it? Well, young Padawans, it's a very good question. You would think, why allow it at all? Well, most of these protocols are tunneling based. And if they are blocked, they will try to retunnel to a different port. This, however, will allow their, these protocols to initiate a session. But it will make the bandwidth. What we're going to do is limit the bandwidth, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, to be so to so minuscule, so useless, that they can't actually use it practically. They can't get any real download application or use out of it. But it is enough for it to, uh, to initiate the session and not try to retunnel to a different TCP port. All right, so let's go through this right now. I think BitTorrent was one. Uh, eDonkey was one. I'm just going to go through my list here. I actually wrote it down, so give me a second. Real-time streaming protocol. Uh, you could potentially do Skype. Um, maybe you want them to only use your legitimate video conferencing system and not something uh, that they download over the internet. Streamworks, I think the next one is Video Live. And then uh, Winamex is another one. So that is quite a list. Let's take a look. So what do we have here? All right, so that's looking pretty good. Ah, that's right. Uh, there is one thing that we wanted to add to this, if I remember correctly. What we wanted to add it was uh, RDP traffic. So let's make another... Uh, access control list and add it to this class map. So we'll say IP uh, access access list extended uh, what will we call this ACL um, I guess I'll call it RDP for terminal services and this is permit TCP any any EQ 3389 you know, I'm just curious. I wonder if they have RDP defined. I don't think they do. 
Let's see. Nope, it doesn't look like they do. It doesn't look like they do. A little surprising. But anyway, okay. All right. So, you know, just to... Let me show you how you do this in the field to make your life easier. So we defined it, the ACL. Copy that. And so now I can go back to the class map here, IPP. 3C map and add it. Match any IPP3 C map. Match access group name and then just paste it there. Make our lives a lot easier. Okay, let's do a quick show run. See how that looks. That looks a lot better now. So that, so yeah, we're matching the VoIP control traffic, SIP, real-time control protocol, and the ACL that we made for terminal services. So those will be bumped up to precedence three. That's looking good. Looking good. Okay, so what we've done at this point now is we've just created a way to identify the traffic. The class maps say, who is this traffic? Now, how we treat that traffic is with the policy map. So that's going to be the next step of this implementation. We create a policy map that tells the, the router, how do I treat each one of these classes? How do I actually treat IPP5, IPP4? And I, this is a common misconception. I want to make sure you're very clear on this. By default, the router is not going to give any preferential treatment to any IP precedent or QoS level. It's not configured by default to configure the behavior to actually have the router or switch forward one set of classes over another you must configure that with a policy and that's what we're going to do it is very important to understand that you know a lot of students think that they'll just define the classes and that's it and they're done it's that's not correct you might identify it but you uh you're not doing anything to it you're saying oh hi that's you okay come on through this is the actual act of putting more uh, more higher priority protocols uh, in the out queue faster than lower priority calls. And that's another thing to understand. Typically when you're talking about QoS queuing, you're talking about the output queue. Which one gets routed or switched out of the device faster? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a policy map. And I'll just call this QoS uh, you know, service provider or I'll ISP, I want to keep it short, QoS ISP. All right, so we've defined the, the, uh, the policy now. What we want to do now is start taking these classes and telling them in this policy how to treat them. So let's do this. Let's first start with a, the highest one, class, IPP5 CMAP. Let me show you here what our options are. There's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, you can specify the exact specific amount of bandwidth in, uh, I think it's kilobytes or bits. You can say you want to compress the headers. Uh, you know, you can say that you want to police it and limit it. Uh, you want, can say that you want to give it a certain priority for this class. There's a lot of things that you're going to do. Uh, I want to give you, I don't really want to go into this. This, you know, this video isn't meant to be an entire lecture on QoS. It's meant to be something real world and practical. So I'm going to give you the configuration that you're going to be using in 90% of your scenarios. And that is you want to divide up your bandwidth in a way that's compatible with the service provider. The way they have given it for us is they tell you it's by percentage of your total bandwidth. So given that information, that's exactly what we're going to do. So you, we, what we're going to do is priority percent 40. Now, let me show you another option here, by the way. Bandwidth percent versus priority percent. It's really, understand, it's really important to understand the difference between the two. Priority percent is really only going to be used for voice over IP where latency is extremely sensitive. And what's very unique about priority percent is number one, it uses a special type of queuing called low latency queuing, which means you're going to have the least amount of wait time between forwarding those packets out. It is the fastest possible queue. Uh, number two, in addition to uh, uh, reserving this 40% of the bandwidth, it's also a policer. It also is not going to allow it to take more than this 40%. It's a brick wall. 
anything that exceeds that 40% will be marked down to regular class traffic. So important to understand that. Priority percent is only uh, capable of being used on one class. Now you may not use it for your VoIP class. You, you can use it however you want. But whatever class you use it on, that's it. The rest of the classes must then uh, use bandwidth percent to define what their usage will be. So we've already defined that we're going to give this the priority 40%. Uh, One other thing that we want to do is best practice, just in case we want to make sure it's going to be remarked as precedence 5 for the service provider. Remember, there's lots of ways to identify traffic. There's DSCP, there's COS, which is the layer 2 tagging on an Ethernet header. The method that the service provider recognizes is IP precedence. So it's common best practice to remark your traffic so it gets specifically set to the right class you want it to be. So we're going to set it to that class. Now let's go on to the other one. Uh, exit out here. Class, and I think it was IPP4 CMAP. All right. Now we do bandwidth percent. What was it again? I believe it was 20. Yes, it was. 20. So bandwidth percent 20. And we want to set the precedence to be 4. Class IPP3 CMAP. Bandwidth percent 20. Set precedence to be 3. All right. And last is our scavenger class. And this is what we're doing here. I say, what did I call it? I think it was scavenger map. Let me take a look here. Scroll up. Hopefully it's still there. Scavenger C map. Yes. Class scavenger C map. This is where we have fun. Bandwidth percent one. That's all you get. And set precedence to zero. So it's best effort. And typically the last thing I want to do, this is something that's the default behavior, but I'd like to do class and then it's called class default, I believe. Let me see. Let's verify with a little question mark. Yes. When in doubt, question mark is your friend. Class default. And I'm just going to set this up as fair queue. So this is the typical practice of uh, best effort traffic. And that's it. Now we've configured the policy map. So go out of here. Let's see what we have so far. There's our class maps. And one thing I like to do is just verify IPP5 CMAP, IPP4 C. Notice I'm doing this to kind of, number one, line up with the service provider, because at the end of the day, that's what matters. You can, you can categorize traffic internally, but who cares? It's once it reaches the service provider's wires, it has to work with them. So I like to do something that's going to help me remember with their mechanism for prioritizing traffic is plus it's easy ipp5.cmap ipp4-cmap it's easy and it's consistent now scavenger cmap is just going to use the regular best effort one but these specific sets of protocols defined by this map all of these uh, streaming or point-to-point -point or file sharing are going to be marked down and get only one percent of your total bandwidth which means on a uh, connection that's 10 meg ethernet they're going to be only getting a maximum of 100k so you know good for us for throttling that down uh, the very last thing that you have to do is you have to apply this to an interface so int fa4 uh, i think it's policy let me see yes no let's see where options are Service policy, that's what it is. Uh, getting my old age. So service policy out. And then the name. Which I think we what did we call it? ISP QOS. Just to kind of give you a hint here, by the way, because I'm sure it's you know it's burning holes type access control. So that would be more of a blocking rather than just a QOS. So in a policy, uh, what was it again? Out name and I keep forgetting the name and my old age there it is QOS ISP oops so there 
think that's it. Yep, that's it. That is soup to nuts how you configure a QoS policy. How do you verify it? I believe it is show, what was it? Show policy map. Yes, show policy map, uh, the name, and then I think the, is this it? Yeah, this will show you the policy map you define. If you want to look at the queuing, I believe you set it for the interface. Yes, interface FA4. There we go. Show policy map the interface it's applied to. That will actually, when you, uh, there's no traffic flowing. This is just, you know, my router here in my, uh, my office, not plugged into production. But you want to see how effective this is. Is it monitoring the traffic? That is the command. Very important. Show policy map interface and you will, and whatever the interface is, and you'll actually see the packets that are getting dropped and marked down. So you can see, is your voice being classified correctly? Is this? And it will also, you know, another good thing here as well, when we have our scavenger class, you know, um, it will tell you how it's being run. Actually, you know, one thing that's important on this one, notice we have different ways. It's matching IP precedence three. It's matching a two access control groups here, one for the specific protocols that were defined by Shortel, one for RDP, and then the in-bar to recognize SIP, uh, RTCP, real-time control protocol. That's another thing that's kind of nice too, is you can see which one of these is it matching on. Maybe it's not being put in the VLAN or subnet that it's supposed to correctly. So that will help you identify that problem. It's good though to have the protocols as a backup in case for some reason it's not assigned to the correct VLAN because maybe the switch isn't set up or someone plugged it into the wrong port, whatever the case may be. All right. If you want to know more, there is a ton of information on Cisco's website. Um, definitely a, a good look here at the broader perspective. You can use QoS for efficiency, but you can kind of use it as a security mechanism as well to throttle down unnecessary and potentially damaging protocols. So uh, I hope this has been a good video tutorial for you. I, uh, I recommend that if you ever implement this in a production network, you definitely do it. Uh, on quiet hours because sometimes when you apply the end bar uh, where again when you're doing match protocol that has to kick in some CPU cycles so once you apply it to the interface once you actually do you know uh, interface FA4 and then service policy whatever the policy map is that can sometimes stop the flow of traffic for you know mm, four to five minutes depending on how much traffic and how busy the network is and how complex your class maps and policy maps are so just be cognizant of that all right, well, this is the Cisco Jedi signing off.